work, energy, power, potential energy, kinetic energy, and the law of conservation of energy. Work is done when a net force acts on an object and the object moves in the direction of the net force. Work is also defined as the energy transferred to an object by an applied force over a distance. It is the total amount of energy used to move an object from one place to another with external force. If the force is constant and the motion takes place in a straight line in the direction of the force, work is calculated as the product of the force on an object and the distance through which the object is moved. How about when someone tries to push, but the object would not move, like a wall? In this case, no work is done, because there is no movement. When distance is zero, then work is zero. We do work when we lift a load against Earth's gravity. The heavier the load, or the higher we lift it, the more work we do. The unit of measurement for work combines a unit of force, newton, with the unit of distance, meter. This is the newton meter, also called the joule. A joule of work is done, when a force of one newton is exerted, over a distance of one meter. Like lifting an apple over your head. Let's try solving a problem on work. Suppose that you apply a 60 Newton horizontal force to a 32 kilogram package, which pushes it 4 meters across a mailroom floor. How much work do you do on the package? Here is how to solve. The formula for work is force times the distance. So, we multiply the 60 Newton force by the 4 meter distance. Thus, work is 240 newton meter, or simply 240 joules. Let's have another one. A weightlifter lifts a 300 newton barbell for 1.2 meters from a squat position to standing position. How much work has she done? Here is the solution. Again, work is force times distance. So, we multiply the 300 newton force, which is the weight of the barbell, by the 1.2 meter distance. Thus, work is 360 newton meter, or 360 joules. Energy may be the most familiar concept in science yet it is one of the most difficult to define. We observe the effects of energy when something is happening. Only when energy is being transferred from one place to another, or transformed from one form to another. Energy is defined as the capacity to do work. And, it may also be transformed from one form to another. Hence, the various forms of energy around us. The two most common forms of energy is potential and kinetic energy. Potential energy is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity g times height. Kinetic energy is equals to one half times mass m times velocity v squared. An object may store energy by virtue of its position. Energy that is stored, 
and held in readiness is called potential energy, because in the stored state, it has the potential for doing work. The potential energy due to elevated positions is gravitational potential energy. Let's have some sample problems on potential energy. In cycling, a 100 kg cyclist with his bike, went up 4.2 meters top of the hill. What is the cyclist's potential energy? Here is the solution. The formula for potential energy is mass times acceleration due to gravity times distance. So, we multiply the 100 kg mass, by the 9.8 meters per second squared, by 4.2 meter distance. Thus, potential energy is 4116 joules. If an object is moving, then it is capable of doing work. It has energy of motion, or kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of an object, depends on the mass of the object, as well as its velocity. Let's solve some problems on kinetic energy. Find the kinetic energy of a 55 gram arrow, traveling at a speed of 90 meters per second. From the given, velocity is 90 meters per second, mass is 55 grams, or 0.055 kilograms. So, we compute for kinetic energy. It's one half of 0.055 kilograms mass, multiplied by the square of velocity 90 meters per second. Thus, Kinetic energy is 222.75 joules. Power is the amount of work done, divided by the time interval during which the work is done. Power is the rate at which work is done. Unit for power is Newton meter per second, or joules per second, also known as watts. From our previous problem, a 60 Newton horizontal force pushes a package 4 meters across a mailroom floor. We already computed the work, which is 240 joules. Now, the question is, how much power was used in the process? Here is how to solve. The formula for power, is work, divided by the time. So. We divide the 240 joules work, by the time of 2 seconds. Thus, power is 120 joules per second, or 120 watts. A high-powered engine does work rapidly. An engine with twice the power of another engine, does not mean it goes twice as fast. Twice the power means the engine can do twice the work in the same amount of time or the same amount of work in half the time a powerful engine can get an automobile up to a given speed in less time than a less powerful engine can the mustang with a monster engine for example can go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.3 seconds while the compact family car focus, can do it much slower at 5.7 seconds. In the United States, engines are still customarily rated in units of horsepower, while, electricity in kilowatts. One horsepower is the same as 0.75 kilowatt, so an engine rated at 134 horsepower is a 100 kilowatt engine. The three main engines of the Space Shuttle, can develop 33,000 megawatt of power, when fuel is burned at the enormous rate of 3,400 kilograms per second. It can reach speeds of over 28,000 kilometers per hour, nine times faster than the average bullet. More important than knowing what energy is, is understanding how it behaves. 
How it transforms. We can understand nearly every process that occurs in nature, if we analyze it in terms of a transformation of energy, from one form to another. The law of conservation of energy states, that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can be transformed from one form into another, but the total amount of energy never changes. Here's an example. Part of the potential energy of a wound spring, changes into kinetic energy. The remaining potential energy goes into heating the machinery, and the surroundings due to friction. No energy is lost. Potential energy will become the kinetic energy of the arrow. The bow then has potential energy. When released, the arrow has kinetic energy equal to this potential energy. It delivers this energy to its target. Everywhere along the path of the pendulum bob, the values of potential energy, and kinetic energy, changes, but their sum, remains the same. Here's another illustration. When the woman leaps from the burning building, the sum of her potential energy, and kinetic energy, remains constant, at each successive position all the way down to the ground. <laughs> 